this place, holy cow, I've got a lot to do around here. I got a new desk uh, that you saw in the last video. I've got a lot of other stuff that I've got going on in production and it's just meant the space has suffered and that's okay. It's gonna have to suffer a little bit more. Um, I have two proposals going out in the next 24 hours, both of which I have one piece that I want to uh, test a little bit to make sure that it works, both of which involve fabric and uh, duplexing. And I have done a little bit of this work already um, as a proof of concept, but I'm gonna do it again and I'll show you what I'm doing. Um, it is essentially making sure that I can duplex with fabric the way that I want. And uh, one of them is velvet and, and it works beautifully in crushed velvet. I'm not sure if crushed velvet is the right answer for this one. So I wanna try it in, uh, in another version of velvet. Um, this black velvet. And then the other one is um, I'm looking at making envelope liners out of menswear fabric. And this is um, just a, a chambray. Uh, it'll probably be more like a um, like a high twist wool for a suit or so. I, I'm not sure what we're going to do yet, but um, it's for a company that does menswear stuff. And I want to make sure that the concept works before I drop it in the proposal. So uh, I'm just going to grab some paper glue all this up and uh, cut it, see what it does. So for one of these projects, uh, the envelope liners, we are using text weight paper. If I can get the client to actually pull the trigger on this, we'll steam this, do the whole deal. I'll open up a whole table and do kind of bulk processing. Right now, I just want to know that the concept works. And so um, I think most of my tests have proven that Super 77 really is the best for adhering uh, fabric and paper. I think this is probably the best option, so we're gonna try this some more. And my friend Carrie at the Idea Emporium reminded me of how terrifying it is, how much of this probably gets in my lungs because I do not wear a mask while I do this. So the idea is the paper backing gives me something uh, for the fabric to adhere to, specifically when we cut this, I'm trying to make it so that the edges of the fabric don't fray. And again, the velvet worked, velvet worked here. Um, and the idea is we're actually going to pop uh, the invitation itself on top of a panel of velvet. Um, but we're gonna try this other heavier, denser velvet. Um, we're gonna see how this works. And that was this paper here. Looks like we can just do a double fold there. So I'll glue both sides of this. Gonna go like this. Gonna fold it and go like that. There you go. That's not bad. That's a chambray, uh, chambray liner. So I totally blew it and didn't record me cutting this. Uh, but I took my two samples of the black felt and um, there's a little bit of cleanup to do. Oh yeah. Uh, one of them came out beautifully aside from the lint. That's not bad. Um, I can get photos of these things, get them uh, put into the proposals, and then we'll take it from there. So in the meantime, uh, I wanna share with you what has been keeping me up at night, what has frustrated me to no end. Uh, it is a project I'm working on for an incredible client named, named Lamont. Uh, he has a company called Faro Cigar Company, and I'm doing cigar bands for him, uh, something I've always wanted to have in my portfolio. and. Um, I have completely painted myself into a corner on this project and I'm slowly finding a way to let the paint dry and sneak around and... Um, this is where I am so far. And uh, I'm gonna start over because the first challenges I had was just getting foil to lay down. These big solid areas, they didn't wanna lay down at all. Uh, it took some real coaxing, some calls to friends, 
about how to set up the press to do it properly. Um, and I got that working. Thank you so much to Jesse Ames and a few other people for really helping me out there. Um, got that working and then I realized the press, this, this press, isn't feeding paper the way I want it to. And there are a few reasons for that. I think some of them I know, some of them I don't. The paper's coming in and sometimes it jogs a little bit, sometimes it doesn't sit right, and it's all so close and under most circumstances it would be no big deal at all. But this is super tight register that then has to be laser cut. And so it's all gotta be spot on. And the thing that I should have done and didn't do is put register marks on this thing so that I can know immediately, visually, if it's aligned or not. Um, I didn't do that, and so it's causing some challenges. And so I'm gonna start that project over, but first I'm gonna do the packaging portion of Lamont's project because I think I have an easier win with this. Um, I hope so. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything set up and then we'll get on press and see. Um, Honestly, I'm not even gonna walk you through the setup on this one. Uh, I know some of you love that. I need more hands in order to do that. And uh, I'm really stressed out and just kinda need a little win right now. So uh, I wanna show you what it looks like once it's printing. Uh, in fact, maybe I'll, yeah, we'll do this instead. My, uh, my camera died in the middle of all of that. And uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. I finished it finally. Um, these are the two. I still need to trim them. There's only supposed to be four inches tall, just a little bit over the height of the text there. But we did it in silver and in gold. And uh, the thing that was giving me a little bit of problem is that that logo there, well, it's embossed. You can see on the back the embossing there. Um, it was giving me a little bit of challenge, and one of the things that I realized is if I cover my embossing die with a small, a, a thin film, I actually used a, a clear, well, I'll show you in a second, um, it 
protects the paper from cracking. Uh, this is not the best paper for foil stamping. Came out beautifully. Um, the two colors are for, man, I can never remember my cigar terms. One uh, of them is gonna be a Maduro wrapper, and then the other one is a lighter wrapper. I forget, like Connecticut maybe? I don't remember. Um, anyway, two different wrapper types on these, and so uh, we're doing uh, silver and gold. And then the, um, well, I don't have any here, but the bands, are the part that were giving me so much trouble. I'm, I've got new foil that came in. I'm gonna hit the ground running on the Monday with those. Uh, but that's not what I really wanted to talk to you about. Uh, today is Friday. I have no idea when you're actually gonna see this because I never edit things like in a reasonable amount of time. But today is Friday the 21st. That means tomorrow is Saturday the 22nd. 0-2-2-2-2-0. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, another palindromic day. And uh, it is the day of Charles and Michael's wedding. And so I can finally show you this invitation. If you've seen on my Instagram, you've seen a couple pictures of little parts of it, uh, but I don't show full invitations until after the wedding, which means by the time you see this, it will be after the wedding and I can show you this. I am so excited about it. Um, Charles and Michael are getting married at a place called Valentine in downtown LA. Uh, when I Googled it, it looks like it's like literally on or around the corner from Skid Row. Uh, I do not know my LA geography that well, I apologize. Um, but uh, they're getting married at this place that was, as far as we understand, a former grow house and brothel and has this giant greenhouse in the middle of it. And they're getting married in the greenhouse, which is super awesome. Uh, Prian with Alfred House Productions is doing the wedding. Uh, Prian was the one who introduced me to Charles and Michael and um, the couple, they're so amazing. And Prian is incredible. He was just featured in Party Slate for a 60th birthday party he did for somebody. Dude is freaking awesome. Um, I am uh, opening this up to show you the proposal for, uh, for this wedding. So this, is the proposal. Uh, I'm just showing you the pictures from the proposal, not the actual proposal. Uh, this is the envelope, the way that I proposed it. And as you can see, we wound up pretty close to that. Um, one of the changes that I made is you see this flap shape here. Um, that was a flap shape from a previous uh, envelope that I did that we just kind of did as a starting point. I love, since we're already doing custom envelopes, virtually every wedding invitation, um, doing uh, custom flap shape. In this case, this flap shape, which uh, you'll see there, this flap shape represents one of the components, uh, the door shape for these keyhole doors at the venue. Uh, there's something really cool happening. Well, I'll tell you about that in a second. So anyway, the envelope looks so much like the way it came out. Sometimes that doesn't happen. Sometimes we make a lot of changes in the design process. In this one, we didn't. Um, here is, uh, here's the main part of the proposal. So you have got um, a folding invitation here. It opens up like a book. Uh, this is, right, there is the uh, actual panel of the invitation. Right there is what you see inside the invitation. There's a card for uh, an invitation to a brunch the day after the wedding to a party the day before the wedding, uh, then you know this is what it looks like all together. Um, it actually came out almost exactly like that. And I wanna share with you a few of the details of it because listen, um, I design and I print. That's a part of this process. I do the whole thing. I print because um, other printers are afraid to push boundaries sometimes. I'm not. And so um, let me tell you about the details of this and why I love it so much. First of all, this is one of my favorite things to do lately is to put uh, invitations in a clear plastic bag. This is the plastic I actually wound up using to, uh, to cover the dye for the, um, for the embossing. I just ripped one of these bags up. But uh, this does a couple things. It serves like a traditional outer envelope. You know, 100 years ago, everything was an inner and outer envelope. And uh, you would send that to protect the inner envelope. You would send it in an outer envelope because it was going like by Pony Express or whatever else. And uh, the outer envelope would get dirty. And when you opened it up, the inner envelope was still safe. This allows us to do cool stuff like wax seals or appliques or whatever. And they're safe because they're in here. It also protects uh, all of this from postage, which gets, you know, well, this one didn't have traditional postage, but you know, it'll get, um, uh, they'll get the little plas uh, uh, white thing down here, the white label so they can put the pink bar on it in the USPS system, all that kind of stuff. Forget that crap, wrap it in this and then it's all taken care of. So this is the envelope. Um, these are actual FedEx labels. We did them in pink because, and get this, 
as I'm doing the consultation with Charles and Michael, they show me the color palette, which is everything you're seeing here. And uh, one of the phrases that came up was their desire to achieve a strict adherence to continuity. I love that so much. It doesn't mean that everything is matchy-matchy, but it means from beginning to end, or in your case, beginning to end, uh, everything in the middle feels like it belongs to the same thing. I have had couples use uh, not include me, this is in a different life, I don't even do this kind of work anymore, but I've had couples not include their wedding planner and designer in the stationary process. And I am basically creating blind, not knowing how it connects to the wedding, only relying on what the couple can tell me. Uh, that's awful. Let me have access to all of those things so I can reach in as close as I can and make something that fits the wedding so well. So this shape here is the shape actually it's it's permutation of the shape of that keyhole door the keyhole door itself had a different angle to it that didn't quite fit the ability to to produce these envelopes uh but it's that shape with this this peak in it and all that uh the way charles and michael are doing their wedding um they're having it in a space that has this beautiful uh jungle painted keyhole door uh but they believe and i think based on the pictures i've seen uh, most of the guests won't realize it's a door. It doesn't look like a door. It looks like a nice little vignette and alcove. And so they're going to have their ceremony. They're going to have cocktail hour. And then these doors are going to open up right into their reception. It's like a huge reveal. So uh, I wanted to start with that same sense of reveal with the invitation itself. So anyway, you pull it out and you've got this panel and then you've got this as well. I actually stuffed it in the invitation for the um, for the main, for when we sent them out. Um, oh, I didn't mention why this is a uh, this is a FedEx label. Well, that's because Michael uh, owns a manufacturing company and uh, we were talking about ways to ship it and uh, it just kind of fits. He ships a lot of stuff with FedEx, has a FedEx account and it just, it fits them to do that. Like vintage stamps don't make sense for this couple. Super cool pink FedEx labels, that works. Uh, so we did that, uh, lined it in the same color. This was one of those where we, we really were strict to like, we have a handful of colors, we're using those everywhere. Um, this was my first time using an envelope that was printed in a pattern like this, in a, in a, with a print like this, a photograph, and holy cow, I'll be doing this again. I love the way this came out. So uh, this is the invitation to the VIP uh, kind of welcome reception. Uh, we did that double thick, and here's the cool thing. This is actually um, scrap from making the rest of the invitation that I was able to print on and turn into this welcome invitation. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, so that came in uh, with the second green that we were using and gold, which mimics the gold foil that we have everywhere else. Um, Charles and Michael are self-described adventurers. They don't vacation, they adventure. In fact, so much so that the hashtag for their wedding is baby babe adventures because they call each other baby and babe. And how freaking cool is that? Baby babe adventures, you can go check it out on Instagram, see all the cool pictures from the wedding because this is after the wedding happened. Uh, so I believe in turning every invitation into an opportunity to connect with your people, to give them a gift. This is an eight by 10 print. This print has a beautiful leaf on it. I can never remember the name of this type of leaf. It's, you know, it's a, it's a jungle thing. Uh, but the quote is, as soon as I saw you, I knew a grand adventure was about to happen. Uh, a. a. Milna, I guess is how you say the name. Um, it was a quote that the couple loved and it fits their personalities and it's a gift to all of their people. So that was the quote that we used there. And then one of my favorite details, not related to the couple, just a super cool attention to detail thing. Uh, this invitation is sealed with magnets. Just a tiny little touch is all it takes to hold it in place. There are magnets inside here and magnets underneath this. You can feel them barely. I actually drilled a hole for those magnets. So that's what you're greeted with. You are invited and clearly this is a little tab to grab at. So you pull that out and this is actually my, my favorite detail of the whole thing. This is the invitation itself. On the back of that paper, it's a duplexed stock. Um, and in letterpress is the fullness of the invitation. Um, I, I love minimal, beautiful invitations. But this pattern here, you see all that gold around there? Uh, it's a decorative element, but specifically, um, it is a decorative element in the form of a bank vault door because Charles and Michael had their very first kiss at a bar that used to be a bank. 
and the bar's in the bank vault. And so to enter the bar, you enter a bank vault door. And it's a little detail that, listen, I didn't want to be heavy handed with this. I didn't want to put like the locks and all. I didn't want it to look like, hey, this is a bank vault door. But all of their friends that know their story, know how they connected, uh, know exactly what that is. And it just becomes a sweet little inside moment for their tribe, for their people. And I think that's freaking awesome. So I try to include that whenever I can. Another thing, and you saw it in the, uh, we did, it was a little bit different. It came out just a tiny bit different in, from the proposal to the invitation. This is the back of the brunch card. Uh, a couple things super cool about this. First of all, it is made from hemp paper. Remember, they are getting married at a former grow house. In fact, uh, I think I saw on the call list that there is actually a cannabis bartender. Um, so hemp paper, plantable seeds. No, it is not that kind of seeds, um, but it turns into wildflowers when you plant it. So a gift to their people. It's a gift to the brunch after the wedding, the day after the wedding. Uh, but this pattern here, one of the things that, uh, when I was talking to Charles and Michael, one of the things that we talked about was their love for creating things, making things by hand. And uh, they sent me some pictures of their place and all the details that they had put into it themselves. You know, Michael has this business in manufacturing um, and all these super cool machines. He's got, you know, giant fiber lasers and all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, but they made um, the flooring of their patio and their headboard uh, from reclaimed wood. And this is actually the pattern of their headboard. It's close. There are some changes I made to it, but this is the pattern of their headboard. And uh, when I pointed that out in the proposal, I forget if it was Charles or Michael. Michael said, oh, I thought that looked familiar. And I was like, yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's a part of your story. And I try to find ways wherever I can to connect this thing that we're creating to the people that it's for. And I think we did a really great job here. And so lastly, you know, it's just, uh, they did not have a print RSVP. We did a digital RSVP on their website. They already had a beautiful wedding website. So we put that in the bottom there along with that, uh, the envelope print again. Uh, but all this folds up into that booklet. It turns into, this is, this is something that can be framed. And that's the goal. Like not every person that gets one is gonna frame it. But if you don't create something like this, no one's gonna keep it. Your mom's not hanging your wedding monogram on her wall. Give her a gift instead. Do something like this. Uh, I am so excited to share this with you. Uh, now I can share pictures of it, put it in my portfolio, put it on Instagram, because I am so happy for the chance to work with Charles and Michael and Priyan to make this amazing invitation for an amazing couple, amazing planner. Uh, it was awesome. I was gonna say amazing again, but another A word. Um, I think that's it for today. Uh, this is one I've been really, I've been so excited to share with you and uh, it just totally snuck up on me. It's, it's tomorrow. And so uh, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that part of the process. There are more press videos to come. Um, I have a new tripod coming. I bought it so that hopefully I can be a little more agile because the reality is when I'm focused on printing, this comes second. And so I wanna find ways to make this easier so I can focus on printing, but still capture it. Uh, and that is thanks to my patrons. If you would like to support the videos of what I do, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash a fine press. I especially wanna thank Torsten Jansky. He has been with me since I started doing this. Uh, Torsten, you're awesome. Uh, you guys are amazing. If you wanna support that, do that, but please like, subscribe, tell a friend, click the bell, do the whole thing, and I will see you next time. I didn't reach, but I can't. Bye.